Hello, I'm Iris. Just your regular 23-year-old? Well, as regular as one can be with a just-inherited priceless art collection. My father, a celebrated artist, just passed away. His passing left a massive void in my life. After all, he was not just my father, but my mentor, my best friend. I remember the day when his lawyer, Mr. Jacobs, read the will. It was a gray Tuesday, and the room was filled with an uneasy silence as we waited for Mr. Jacobs to begin. In accordance with the final wishes of the deceased, Mr. Jacobs had begun, his voice shaking the eerie silence. Mr. Arthur Peterson has left his entire art collection, worth several millions, to his beloved daughter, Iris Peterson. The room spun as I absorbed his words. Me? The recipient of my father's art collection? I glanced over at my stepmother Elise and stepsister Nina, who stared back at me, their faces masks of icy shock. Elise was the first to break the silence. Surely there's been a mistake, she said in a voice as cold as winter. Her eyes, the color of charcoal, flashed with a resentment I didn't understand. No mistake, Mr. Jacobs said, peering at us over his spectacles. He was very explicit in his wish. But she's just a child. Nina chimed in, her voice dripping with scorn. She wouldn't know a Picasso from a Van Gogh. Actually, I do, I replied, my voice small but steady. I was shaken, yes, but I wouldn't let them belittle me. Dad taught me. Elise let out a harsh laugh. Of course he did. He always did favor you. After that meeting, everything changed. There was a bitterness, a chill that seemed to permeate every corner of our house, Elise and Nina wore their resentment on their sleeves. Their words and actions grew colder and more hurtful. Despite this, I tried to not let it get to me. I was mourning my father. The last thing I needed was to get into a feud. Plus, I had inherited my father's legacy, his beloved art. Little did I know, the art collection would be the least of the surprises my father had left me. But then again, life, as I was beginning to learn, was full of surprises— some joyous, some heartbreaking, but surprises all the same. And as I grappled with my grief and my newfound wealth, I was on the verge of uncovering a secret that would change my life. Yet again, days passed after the reading of the will, and my stepmother Elise's cold anger didn't thaw. The house that was once filled with laughter and warm conversations had become a mausoleum of silence punctuated only by the occasional biting remarks of Elise and Nina. I needed to escape, at least for a while. And that's when I found it. A box that had been gathering dust in the attic. It was an old wooden box, the kind my father used to store his unfinished sketches. The box was filled with sketches, letters, and a picture of a man who bore an uncanny resemblance to me. A scribbled note on the back of the photo read, to my best friend Arthur and my beloved daughter Iris, always in my heart, Patrick. Who was Patrick, and why was I, an infant at that time, his beloved daughter? I needed answers, and I knew just the person who could help. Mary, our old nanny, had been with our family for as long as I could remember. If anyone knew about this Patrick, it would be her. I rushed over to Mary's house, clutching the box close to my chest. I was greeted by her warm smile and the comforting smell of fresh cookies. Iris, my dear, you look like you've seen a ghost, she exclaimed. I quickly explained my discovery and showed her the picture. Her smile faded as she picked up the photograph, her eyes filled with a mixture of sadness and surprise. This is Patrick, Iris, your biological father, she said, her voice shaking a little. He and your dad were best friends. He was a talented artist but never had the success your father did. I felt like a ton of bricks had hit me. Why? Why didn't anyone tell me this? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. Mary sighed. After Patrick died, your dad promised to raise you as his own. He didn't want you to feel different or less loved. And so we never talked about Patrick. But why do Elise and Nina hate me? I questioned, tears welling up in my eyes. I think they've always seen you as a reminder of Arthur's bond with Patrick, a bond they could never truly understand or be a part of, she said, her voice filled with empathy. And now, with the inheritance, I suppose it's just brought all those feelings to the surface. Her revelation left me feeling more alone than ever. My father was gone, 
and I was left dealing with a family who resented me and a truth that felt more like a bombshell. But I was determined to stand tall amidst this chaos, just like my father had taught me. After all, I was Iris, daughter of two artists, one who gave me life and one who gave me his love. And no amount of resentment from Elise and Nina was going to change that. Coming to terms with my new reality took time. But I was getting there, slowly but surely. However, I wasn't prepared for Elise's plan to break me. One evening, she invited me to dinner, just the two of us. There was something about her faux-friendly demeanor that made my instincts scream caution. Iris, dear, there's something you should know, she began with a brittle smile. Her eyes were steely, devoid of any motherly warmth. I am well aware of that terrible perfume you're wearing, Elise. It's an assault to my senses, I joked. My humor was my shield, my way to cope with the inevitable storm. Ignoring my remark, she continued, I think it's time you knew the truth, Iris. You are not Arthur's biological daughter. You're adopted. I couldn't help but chuckle at her dramatic revelation. The news which she expected to break me barely caused a ripple in my calm. Been there, heard that, Elise, I said, giving her a smirk. And I must say you're a little late to the party. Her face fell, the surprise and disappointment written all over it. She had hoped the news would devastate me, perhaps even send me packing, but I wasn't about to give her the satisfaction. Instead, I decided to rub salt into the wound. You know, it's funny, I mused, playing with my food. I just realized that I've become something of an accidental heiress. Dad's penniless friend's daughter inherits his millions. Now isn't that a plot twist? The look on her face was priceless, but as satisfying as that moment was, it also made me reflect on my relationship with my stepfamily. All these years, I had tried so hard to be a part of their world, to win their approval. But their hearts had always been closed off to me, their words and actions consistently proving that blood was thicker than water in their book. It was clear as day that my place wasn't amongst them. The toxicity they brought was something I didn't need in my life. So I made a decision. A decision to carve out a life for myself, far away from the bitterness and the resentment of my stepfamily. I got up from the table, leaving Elise staring at me, her face as white as a sheet. Well, this has been fun, I said, smirking at her. But I have an empire to run. With that, I walked away, leaving behind a speechless Elise and a toxic past. I was Iris, the accidental heiress, and I had a future to build. I sat in the cab, clutching the handle tightly as we crossed the city limit. The skyline of New York was becoming a distant memory in the rearview mirror, replaced by the endless stretch of road leading to my new life. I was headed to Cambridge, Massachusetts. A full scholarship at Harvard University was waiting for me. Settling into the dorm was surprisingly easy. My roommate, Lucy, was an ambitious girl from Chicago. We bonded instantly over our shared love of art and our dislike for cafeteria food. For the first time in a long while, I felt I belonged. Still, I was haunted by my past. Nights were particularly difficult. The darkness would creep in, bringing with it a wave of memories and regret. It was during these trying times I would call Mary. Hey, it's me, I would begin, my voice shaking slightly. Can't sleep again. And I'm here, dear she would reply, her voice a comforting balm to my troubled soul. We would talk about everything and nothing at all until I was too tired to stay awake. With time, I grew to love college life. My studies kept me occupied, and my newfound friendships provided a sense of belonging. Lucy, in particular, had become a constant in my life, our bond strengthening with each passing day. One evening, as we sat in our room, Lucy asked me a question that had been on her mind for a while. Iris, don't take this the wrong way, but why are you here? I mean, you're a millionaire. Why do you need a degree? I looked at her, surprised. The truth was, I hadn't really thought about it. I suppose it's because I don't want my wealth to define me, I finally replied. I want to earn my place in this world, not just inherit it. Lucy nodded, understanding. She was one of the few people who saw me for who I was, not for the money I had. In between lectures and assignments, I also made time to visit art galleries and museums. The art world was still a significant part of my life. After all, it was my legacy. 
I wanted to make my dad proud by using the inheritance to support budding artists. The college years were a blur of study sessions, coffee runs, and art exhibits. There were tears, laughter, and moments of self-doubt, but I weathered through them all. I had found my strength, my independence, and most importantly, my identity. I'm proud of you, Iris, Mary's voice echoed through the phone during one of our late-night conversations. I could hear the sincerity in her voice. Thank you, Mary, that means a lot, I said, my voice choked with emotion. I had come a long way from being the unwanted stepdaughter. Now I was Iris, a student, a friend, and an art enthusiast. I was finally writing my own story. And this was just the beginning. The first year of college was coming to an end. A chill was starting to nip at the air, and my heart felt as cold as the weather outside. It was the anniversary of my father's death, a day that was supposed to be about remembering him, but it was made bitter by the callous actions of Elise and Nina. We have rights too, Iris, Elise had said over the phone, her voice icy cold. Your father may have loved you more, but he was still our family. I was taken aback by her audacity, but I didn't let it rattle me. His art was his life, Elise, I countered, my voice steady. And he chose to leave it to me. You received your part of the inheritance. Isn't that enough? But that was before we knew who you really are. Nina chimed in, her voice echoing her mother's bitterness. Their words stung, but I refused to let them pull me into their bitterness. That changes nothing. Dad loved me and I loved him. Nothing you say can take away from that. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go. I ended the call, feeling drained. Elise and Nina's relentless attacks were exhausting, but I wasn't about to back down, not when it came to my father's legacy. Mary was there for me through it all. Her constant support was a beacon of light in my darkest hours. They are just blinded by their greed, dear, she'd soothe, wrapping an arm around me. You stay strong. And I did. I dove into my studies, immersing myself in the world of art, architecture, and design. I found solace in the companionship of Lucy and our friends. They knew nothing about my stepfamily's bitter tirade, and I wanted to keep it that way. One day, as we sat in our favorite coffee shop, Lucy asked, You've been distant, Iris. Is everything okay? I hesitated, then sighed. It's the anniversary of my dad's death. I guess I'm just missing him more than usual. Lucy reached out, squeezing my hand. I'm here, okay? We all are. Her words brought tears to my eyes, but they were comforting tears. For the first time in my life, I felt understood. These were the people who truly cared for me, not because they were obligated to, but because they chose to. Elise and Nina's attempts to claim my father's art collection were relentless, but I stood my ground. With every passing day, I felt my resolve strengthen. They would not get a single piece of my father's art. It was his love, his passion, and now it was my responsibility. And I wouldn't let them tarnish it with their greed. Grief was a constant companion, but I was learning to live with it. I found ways to remember my father without letting the pain consume me. I channeled my sadness into my studies, my art, and my friendships. And every night, as I looked at the stars from my dorm room window, I'd whisper to the wind, I miss you, Dad. But I'm doing okay. I promise. The pain was still there, but I was moving forward. I was learning to balance grief with strength and sadness with resilience. I was dealing with my loss one day at a time. Art isn't just an object, Iris. It's a representation of the artist's soul, my father used to say. Now, looking at the pieces he left behind, I felt a deeper connection to him than ever before. Each piece was a testament to his life and passion. But there came a time when I had to make a difficult decision. In the weeks following my stepfamily's attempts to lay claim on my father's art collection, my lawyer, Mr. Browning, had stood by me like a fortress. He made sure Elise and Nina never got near the precious pieces. With his help, I felt protected and empowered. Iris, you have the legal right to do as you please with your father's art. He reassured me one day in his office. Don't let their words sway your decisions. I nodded, taking in his words. Thank you, Mr. Browning. With the reassurance, I decided to sell some of the art pieces. Not out of need, but because I wanted them to be appreciated by others as my father would have wanted. 
The decision was hard, but I felt a strange sense of peace afterwards. The art pieces fetched a generous sum, enough to help me build my new life. With the money, I bought a small studio apartment and invested in my dream of owning a boutique. Elise and Nina were, of course, aghast when they heard about my new endeavors. Iris, dear, Elise sneered during a rare encounter at a local cafe. I heard about your little shop. Isn't it beneath you to be a shopkeeper? I just smiled at her, my heart surprisingly calm. At least I'm not begging for someone else's inheritance, I retorted. Nina gasped, but I only waved them off as I left the cafe. It was a small victory, but it felt good to stand up to them. Building the boutique from scratch was a fulfilling process. Each piece of clothing, each accessory, was chosen with care and love. The shop was small, but it was mine. When the boutique finally opened, my friends and Mary were there to support me. Lucy, as always, was by my side, her excitement contagious. Oh, Iris, this is amazing, she gushed, her eyes sparkling with genuine happiness. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Lucy, I said, my heart swelling with joy. I couldn't have done it without you all. The boutique thrived, much to my stepfamily's chagrin, but I didn't let their bitterness get to me. Instead, I focused on my work and my friends. I was building a life that was truly mine, and nothing they did could tarnish it. At the end of the day, I'd returned to my small studio, surrounded by the few art pieces I'd kept. Each one reminded me of my father and his love for art. And as I looked at them, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. I'm living, Dad, I'd whisper to the silent room. I'm living as you would have wanted me to. It wasn't always easy and there were days when their harsh words left me hurting. But with each passing day, I was learning the art of living, one stroke at a time. I was making my own masterpiece, shaping my life the way I wanted it to be. And no one, not even Elise or Nina, could take that away from me. Running a boutique is like running a small kingdom. You have to take care of your people, your products, and your reputation. You have to be ready for the good days and the bad, my business partner Alex had once told me. And he was right. Owning the boutique, Iris Blooms, was a challenge, and there were days when I doubted myself. But my drive to succeed kept me going. Through hard work and dedication, I turned the boutique into a thriving business that attracted clients from all over the city. Elise and Nina's disdain for my success only fueled my determination to do better. Their coldness, instead of making me bitter, made me stronger. But that strength didn't come from their rejection. It came from the love and support I received from Mary, my friends, and most surprisingly, Alex. Alex had become more than just a business partner over the past year. We'd grown close, sharing late-night business talks that often turned into personal conversations. His humor and compassion had been a balm to my bruised heart. One night, after a particularly successful day at the boutique, Alex and I sat in my small apartment, surrounded by the art pieces I'd kept. The mood was light, and for the first time in a long time, I felt truly happy. Iris, you've built something amazing here, Alex said, his eyes sparkling in the soft light. You should be proud. I am, I admitted. But I couldn't have done it without you, Alex. You've been more than just a partner. He smiled at that, a soft, understanding smile that made my heart flutter. Iris, he began, his voice barely above a whisper. I don't just see you as a business partner. I care about you. More than I should. The confession took me by surprise, but a pleasant one. I realized then that I too cared for Alex, more than I'd cared for anyone in a long time. We found love amidst the chaos of running a boutique and dealing with a spiteful stepfamily. It was unexpected, but it was real. Mary and my friends were ecstatic about my relationship with Alex. They embraced him like a family member, and their acceptance of him felt like a warm hug. I always knew you'd find someone who'd appreciate you, Iris, Mary said, her voice filled with affection. Your dad would have been so proud. And I knew she was right. My father would have been proud. Not just because I'd found love, but because I'd created my own destiny despite the odds. Elise and Nina never stopped their bitter attempts to belittle me, but they no longer affected me. I had found a family in my friends and Mary, and a partner in Alex. I'd built a successful business and carved a place for myself in this world. 
I'd learned that family wasn't always about blood. It was about who stood by your side, who loved you unconditionally, and who celebrated your victories. The story of my life had been filled with unexpected twists and turns. But as I sat in my small apartment, surrounded by the people I loved and the art that reminded me of my father, I felt content. In creating my own destiny, I'd found my true self. I'd become a woman who was loved and respected, a woman who was brave and resilient, a woman who was proud of her journey. I was no longer just Iris, the accidental heiress. I was Iris, the woman who created her own destiny.